sure. Nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous. I had been and I am. Why then should you say that I'm mad? The disease has sharpened my senses, not dealt them, not destroyed them. Above all, my sense of hearing acute. I heard all things in heaven and in earth. Well then, am I mad? Hearken, and observe how healthily, how calmly, I can tell you the whole story. It's impossible to say how the idea came into my head. But once conceived, it, it, it haunted me, day and night. Object, there was none. Passion, there was none. I love the old man. His gold I have no desire for. I think it was his eye. Yes, it was this. He had an eye of a vulture. A pale blue eye with a gray film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold. So gradually, I, I decided, by degree, to take the life of the old man. And thus, rid myself of his eye forever! Now that's the thing. You fancy me mad. Madman know nothing. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded. I was never kinder to the old man the whole week before I killed him. And every night, I turned the latch of his door and opened it all oh, so gently. And then, when I made an opening sufficient for my head, I put in a dark lantern, all closed, closed, so that no light shone out. And then I thrust my head in. Oh, you would have. I moved slowly, oh, very slowly, so that I might not disturb the man's sleep. I could see him as he lay upon his bed. Ha! Would a madman have behaved so wisely? And this I did for seven long nights. Every night, just at midnight. But I always found the eye closed. So it was impossible to do my work. Because it wasn't the old man who vexed me. But his evil eye. more than usually cautious in opening the door. Perhaps he heard me, for he moved in his bed as if startled. But his room was as black as pitch, and I knew he couldn't see me. 
within the old man sprung up and cried out, Who's there? I can quite still. I said nothing. It was open. Wide, wide open! of the old man's heart. It increased my fury. But even yet, I, I, I refrained and kept still. I scarcely breathed. But it grew quicker and quicker and louder and louder. as this excited me into uncontrollable terror. Yet for minutes longer I refrained and kept still. But the beating grew louder and louder and louder and louder. I thought the heart must burst. <laughs> the old man's hour had come. With a loud yell, I leaped into the room. He shrieked once, once only. In an instant, I dragged him to the floor and put the heavy bed over him. Then I smiled, gaily, to find the deed so far done. The old man was dead. I removed the bed and examined the corpse. Yes, he was stone, stone dead. His eye would bother me no more. If you still think I'm mad, you will think so no longer when I tell you the wise precautions I took for the concealment of the body. As the night waned, I worked hastily, but silently. First, I dismembered the corpse. I cut off the head, the arms, and the legs. Oh, and there was no blood spots whatsoever. I was too clever for that. A tub got all. <laughs> and then I took three plates from the flooring of the chamber and deposited them in between the scantilings, replacing the boards so perfectly, so cleverly, that no human eye, not even his own, would have detected anything wrong. When I had made an end to my labors, it was four o'clock. As the bell sounded the hour, there came a knocking at my street door. I went downstairs with an open heart. For what had I now to fear? There were three men, officers of the police. A screech had been heard by a neighbor. Suspicion of foul play had been aroused. I smiled. For what had I to fear? I bade the gentleman welcome. The screech, I said, was my own in a dream. The old man I mentioned was absent out of the country. I took my visitors all over the house. I bade them search. Search well. I led them at length 
to his chambers. I showed him his treasures. Secure, undisturbed. The officers were satisfied. My manner had convinced them. They sat, and while I answered cheerfully, they chatted of familiar things. But her long. I felt myself getting pale. I wished them gone. My head ached. I, I fancied ringing in the ears. <laughs> Yet still they sat, still they chatted. The ringing became more distinct. It continued and became more distinct. I, I, I talked more freely to rid myself of the feeling, but it continued and gained definiteness until at length I found that the sound was not within my ears. I talked more quickly, more vehemently, yet the noise steadily increased. Oh God, what could I do? What could I do? I foamed, I raved, I swore. Heard not. Almighty God. No! No! They heard, they suspected, they knew! They were making a mockery of my horror! This I thought, and this I think! And then again. Louder and louder and louder! Villains! Dissemble no more! I admit the deed! Tear up the blanks! Here, here! It is the beating of his hideous heart! True. Nervous. <laughs>